Marva strikes back from beyond the grave, and Andor finally stands up for what he believes in. I'm Chris Goodmakers, and this is Andor's season finale explained. It looks like Marva got her fight after all. Cassian's adoptive mother passed away last episode, and in a rare move for the series, she did it from natural causes. Her funeral is the centerpiece of the finale, and it's taking place on Rick's Road. This is a poignant place to strike back at the Empire because it's where Marva almost lost everything. Rick's Road was where Clem was executed. Clem was Andor's adoptive father and Marva's partner. We see in a flashback that he was attempting to quell a few angrier citizens when he was mistaken for an instigator and hanged. Marva talks about how for years afterwards she would avoid Rick's Road because she didn't want to see the pole her husband was hanging from. After Cassian's act of defiance in episode 3, Marva shed herself of that fear. She drew inspiration from resistance growing around her and decided to spend her last days fighting back. As such, she pre-programmed a hologram to deliver a final message of hope and vengeance upon the Empire. Her words echo that of Nemec, whose manifesto Andor has been drawing inspiration from. It's fitting that her message is broadcast in the middle of Rick's Road and by B2 EMO, her loyal friend and companion. Thankfully, the steadfast, stuttering droid makes it out of the fray unscathed. I don't think I could have personally handled losing that nervous little red robot. The final image of the season reveals another answer to a burning question. What were they building in that prison? When Cassie and Andor is arrested for the crime of beach going, he is taken to a brutal and isolated factory prison. He and his other inmates are consistently working on the same large star-shaped pieces of equipment. Their purpose is unknown to even Andy Serkis, who is in charge of keeping his fellow prisoners in order. Andor even mentions that whatever it is they're working on must be so important that they've risked overextending their guard presence to dangerously low levels. Well, it looks like the hundreds of pieces of equipment were actually vital components for the main cannon on the currently under construction Death Star. The main firing dish, or whatever it's called in some Star Wars cutaway book, is being assembled in space before it's fitted onto the Death Star. We actually see this moment in Andor sequel slash A New Hope prequel, Rogue One. Huh. This viewing order is starting to get confusing. Of course, it's overseen by CGI Tarkin, who talks about the various delays that have stalled construction on the Death Star. Now, we know that at least one of those delays was the loss of an entire slave labor force on a man-made prison island. This even gives us a clearer timeline on the construction of the massive space station. Andor takes place in 5 BBY. BBY, for the casual fan, stands for Before the Battle of Yavin, aka Before the First Movie. So Andor is five years before the Death Star is completed and fully operational. As we see in Revenge of the Sith, construction began on the Death Star right after the Empire's formation in 19 BBY. Wow, 19 years to build and all it took was one small hole and one well-placed shot to render the whole thing into space dust. I guess the Empire learned a lot from its construction because after the Battle of Yavin, it only took them four years to get another one double the size up and running. Still, it's an impressive pace. Too bad that one also evaporates along with their beloved Emperor. Whoops. After helping Bix escape her captors, he joins Luthen on his ship. It's a mirror of the last time he found himself aboard the mysterious Collector's vessel, all the way back in Episode 4. During his first conversation with Luthen, Cassian expressed that he was more concerned with keeping his head down and staying alive rather than fighting the Empire. However, over the course of the season, he learns that there is no hiding from the Empire's reach. At the end of the season, he is back on board Luthen's ship with the opposite outlook. He literally puts his life in Luthen's hands to show that he is finally ready to fight back. It's a risky move considering Luthen was traveling to Ferex to dispatch Andor. Andor is one of the only people to see Luthen's face and know he is behind the rebel efforts. So Andor is a risky loose end. Despite this, Luthen takes Andor on and the pair are ready to bring the fight to the Empire's doorstep. So the first season of Andor has come to a close and who knew it would be the best Star Wars story in a decade? The show brought us a grounded and tense look at the birth of the Rebellion and what fascism means for the people of the Star Wars galaxy. It also gives us a really great message. 
it takes the collective effort and sacrifice of many brave people. Andor returns for one more season, but until then, I'm Chris Goodmakers, and I say, keep up the fight.